And scientists announced today they have made a major breakthrough in the quest to create life in a laboratory. For the first time, they have produced a living cell in which the active DNA was put together by computers. What does this mean for science, and does it mean there is now synthetic life? Dr. Richard Besser is here. Rich. That's right, Diane. Today's announcement marks a major turning point. Researchers have now created life from non-living parts. They call it a synthetic cell. World-renowned geneticist Craig Venter has been trying to unlock the mystery of life for 15 years. What have you achieved? Well, we announced today uh, the first synthetic cell. Instead of having a genetic relative that it evolved from, uh, uh, the parent of this cell is a computer. What Venter has done is astonishing. With just four bottles of chemicals off the shelf in his lab, his team replicated more than a million bits of genetic code to create a living organism. Here's how it worked. They isolated bacterial cells and removed all of their genetic material, the DNA from inside. Then they took those four bottles of chemicals and used them to create new genetic material. They transplanted it into the empty cell. That material, that new cell booted up and began to reproduce and reproduce a billion times. I think this is the creation of life and I think it's an experiment that shows that life is not a mystery, that it's not some mysterious force that infuses things that makes them come alive. If you put the right genetic message in the right order, put it into the right environment, it will come alive. But along with promise comes precaution. Like any great scientific innovation, this has enormous promise and enormous peril. Um, this may allow us to make more virulent viruses. This could unleash a bacterium on the world that has properties we didn't expect that could cause great disease or ecological damage. Scientists will surely debate whether this is truly creating new life, but no one can deny the potential impact of this achievement. Venter says that within a year, this technology will be producing vaccines, and in the future, bacteria may be used as powerhouses to generate energy and clean up oil spills. I'm not so sure with what the one person said, that life is not a mystery, by the way. But what's the one word you've been hearing from scientists all day? Historic. Historic. And it's going to be banner headlines in the scientific world for That's sure. Right. Thank you, Rich Besser. controlled by a synthetic chromosome, one that we made by starting with the genetic code in the computer, uh, four bottles of chemicals, and building every one of the million plus base pairs in the right order, and then finally having this uh, large molecule uh, inserting it in a recipient cell. Uh, that molecule started to be red and transformed that cell into a totally new species. Think of uh, small pieces of DNA like Legos. Uh, we have pieces uh, that overlap uh, with the identical sequence uh, so that we can put small pieces together to make bigger pieces. This project started 15 years ago trying to understand what a minimal life form was. Uh, it was based on trying to understand uh, uh, whether there was life on Mars or what size uh, life forms those could be. Uh, could we understand a, a single a cell even, let alone uh, the whole human genome? but it also means it's a great tool set as we try to solve uh, some of these problems we're all facing. Uh, we have 6.8 billion people here now. Uh, within 30 to 40 years, there's supposed to be 9 billion people. We don't have a means of providing food, clean water, medicine, energy uh, for the 6.8 billion, uh, and we're destroying our planet in the process. How do we do it for 9 billion people? We need new tools of science. It is a powerful technology. It's uh, what has been labeled as a dual-use technology, like most technology is. It could be used for uh, doing harm to others or, or uh, trying to uh, solve the problems of the planet. Uh, so our view is it's sort of a linear increase in what people could do on the problem side, but it's an exponential increase in what we can do on the positive side. Uh, but then obviously we have to worry about uh, in this day of uh, constant threats of terrorism, people trying to make something deliberately harmful. 
Uh, but we have an extremely sophisticated team that did this work, uh, and this is not going to be uh, replicable in the near future in the high school science lab.